Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal. Today's video is gonna be a quick one about um, how to create a banner image in YouTube for your YouTube channel uh, using the GIMP uh, open source photo editor available for uh, Linux, Ubuntu and other distros. Really, really amazing tool. Uh, so basically, this is going to be just the really, really simple part of it. There are other videos I've seen about using GIMP for this purpose. They show some more features. I'm gonna show less in the way of uh, advanced stuff and actual logo creation. I'm just gonna show the kind of how to get going with it uh, parts of this. So basically, um, your YouTube uh, dimensions are currently as follows. They are 2560 by 1440 pixels, right? So what you want to do in the first instance is create a, a banner for yourself in those dimensions. And I've gone ahead and just filled it with white. So uh, it's just white color uh, there and with those dimensions. Now the thing about YouTube is that uh, if you put stuff here or here, it's not necessarily going to make it into, uh, a, it's not gonna render on all devices. So you know, if someone's looking at it from a phone or looking at it from a tablet, it's not guaranteed. But YouTube does give you at the time of recording, and I say that because the dimensions tend to change over time, at the time of recording, the text and logo safe area is a 1546 by 423 pixel um, rectangle that is centered on the, uh, on, on the horizontal and vertical axes, on the X and Y. So all you really need to do to make sure that you're, the logo you're designing in uh, GIMP, uh, you wanna basically keep your artwork and your uh, logo within this area and so that it's, it renders basically, okay? So here's what here's the method I have been employing to do this. So I create a new layer and I call this layer the save text area guide. Now, firstly, put plop in those uh, dimensions, which are gonna be here 1546 and 423. Now, if you wanna be smart, there is a way to be smart. You can uh, subtract 2560 minus 1546, that's gonna give you a number. Sorry, I can't remember what number that is. Divide that number by two, and that's gonna be your Y, sorry, that's gonna be your X offset. Uh, the division by two is gonna make it equal on the equal on both sides. And then you can do fifth, sorry, 1440 minus 423, uh, and then divide, the, uh, divide that number by two, and that'll give you a, that'll center the image on the Y axis, okay? That'll make this and this equal and this and this equal. But you don't even need to do that. But that's what these, that's that, that's that's if you want to use these offset X and Y and uh, save yourself a step, you can do that. I'm gonna give the four, I'm gonna fill that up with the foreground color so it stands out. Now click OK and what you're gonna get is the uh, guiding rectangle, if you will. Uh, but the problem is that it's not in the right place. It's just stuck there on the left. So fortunately, there is a tool in GIMP. It's called the Align Tool, and it's pretty. No so I use the Legacy icon set. Most people clearly do not. There was the uh, the most recent one. But if you have uh, the Legacy set, it's the alignment logo is this one. It's pretty logical because it's got four little arrows, left, right, top, down, and a rectangle in the bottom. So click onto this guy and then click the layer you want to align. That's important. You need to actually click on the layer, in this case, this box, right? So when I did, you got these four little uh, grabby things on the side of it. Sorry, I don't, I don't know the correct name for those. Then uh, go out of your layer option tab and click into the tool options tab. Now I want to align, even though it doesn't make a difference in this case, just, just as a best practice, we're aligning it relative to the image. So uh, we're centering it on the entirety of the canvas and not anything else. And then it's really easy, you just need to do two clicks. This is going to be a line in the center. So now you can see it is uh, perfectly aligned there. And if we were to measure this area in pixels and this area in pixels, we would get the same as if we subtracted 2560 from 1546 and divided in two. And then we need to do it like this and now we are good. So you can just see visually that's right slap bang in the center of our canvas. So this is all good. So now what I do is I just kind of create a new layer. Um, and I just kind of, you know, I'm gonna actually build into this layer and unless I wanna put a bit of, uh, so I just fill that with the background color, text goes here. Now that box we're seeing is the safe text area. So you wouldn't want to necessarily, you wouldn't want to fill it all the way up with text, but just in case we did for whatever reason, uh, it, so long as it's with anywhere within this rectangle, you're good to go. So that's why I give it a different color. Other people do that uh, alpha two selection and do other tricks. This is my methodology. 
Now, you might be wondering, well, is that ugly rectangle going to render in this ugly logo? The answer is no. All you need to do is uh, get your logo as you like it, get everything good, make sure everything's in the box. And then before you export, uh, simply make the uh, guidance box invisible. Then what you can do is save this as a file. And uh, you know, when if you wanna work on the logo, the, art, the artwork a bit more, you can just turn the guidance box back, back on, turn it off, and then export when you're actually uh, rendering your artwork for YouTube. And that is it, that's the uh, quick and dirty method for creating a YouTube cover image artwork using the GIMP open source photo editor.